Oh man, uh, you know definitely the one with Luca the other night that will definitely be up there as one of my favorites. Um, made the one to Tyler Cook in the Big Ten tournament, running out of bounds play, threw a lob to him, and that was probably will go down as one of my favorites ever, just because kind of the significance behind you know how much we prepared for that play, just to see unravel in the actual game and how it worked out, and he dunked over like seven guys, including the refs. I feel like so uh, it was. There's just, there's just so many plays. I, I came and I would have to have, have a lot of time to think about it. Jordan, the next question from David Eicholt. Yeah, Jordan, I don't think we've talked to you since the NCAA announced that they've got 25% you no know, capacity for the NCAA tournament. Are you kind of excited to start playing in front of fans again? Yeah, I mean, it adds a different environment. Granted, it won't be really anything until the Final Four. I think 25% is around, what, 18,000 for Lucas Oil Stadium, which is kind of crazy to think about for a Final Four attendance level. Um, so hopefully we can get to that, that point and it'll kind of create a different environment for once of you know competing around that fan atmosphere. So that'd be really cool. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, the fans, we try not to let the fans you know, impact too much of what we do on the court. So we just have to, you know, once we get there, be able to, you know, play up to our level that we know we are capable of. The next question from Mark Emmert. And Jordan, you've said that the assist record means more to you than anything else that you've accomplished, I think, individually. Why is that? Why is that so important to you? Um, you know, the, I think just when I got here at Iowa, um, I mean, right from the start when I was as a <clears throat> freshman at campus, a lot of people doubted, you know, be, me be, even be able to play at Iowa or playing at the Big Ten level. and. You know, I was, thought I had a pretty good freshman year, and I started proving myself that I belong. And you know, then people say, <clears throat> you know, I just had really great players around me, and I wasn't able to, you know, maybe break the three-point record, or you know, I wasn't a really a true point guard. So I think all these added things kind of add to my fire of, you know, I, I can be a really great leader of this team, and whether that's me scoring or me passing the ball. And I've always prided myself of being a really great leader on the floor. Um, you know, trying to be as vocal as possible and getting the guys in the right spots. And if they're not in the right spots, I have to tell them they have to be at a certain spot at a certain time. So, you know, I always thought of myself as a great point guard and continue to try to lead the team. And, you know, being a great point guard means you have to be able to, you know, have a great assist to turnover ratio and know when to find guys when they're hot. And um, I think that's been a lost start of a basketball, um, you know, of point guard trying to find guys that, you know, have made a couple of shots and then they go to a different guy instead. And that's something, you know, I've always been on my mind if Weezy's hitting three or four shots in a row that I, I'm going to make it, you know, a point for myself to go get the ball to him at the end of the game um, when he's hitting shots. And the same thing with anyone on the team. We have time for two more questions. The first from Mike Kalas. Come to Iowa seeing yourself as a great point guard, or is this something that's that's been an evolution with you? Um, yeah, it's funny. I wasn't. I didn't really see myself as a point guard when I was, you know, under, you know, fourth, fifth grade. I always was just a great shooter, and I didn't really, you know, see myself as ever being, you know, a point guard in the Big Ten. Uh, and then, you know, my game started to progress, and I started working on my ball handling even more as I grew up. And I slid, slid over to the one when I was a high schooler, and. You know, I shot a lot when I was a high schooler because I always had the ball and, you know, I was like, well, this is pretty cool. If I always have the ball, I can get a lot of points. And, you know, it worked out for myself in high school. And then I went to get, when I realized when I got to college, I was like, I can do a lot more things with the ball um, and setting teammates up and making them better and all these guys around me. So I think my game really, you know, it evolutioned across as I was, you know, playing from fourth to you know high school then slid over to college I think my game kind of just progressed in certain ways and you know I kind of I still consider myself as a scorer but at the end of the day my job is to get other guys the ball and that's what I tried to do. Final question this afternoon Jordan from Chad Leistico. Hey Jordan, I, uh, coach said you're coming back between games and I know you mentioned that was your preference um, so number one uh, happy about that and number two I guess uh, you play the top two top five teams this week. What do you guys want to prove about yourself? Oh yeah, thank God we're coming back between the games. I was I was worried about that one. I wanted to get some sleep in my own bed, knowing that we'll be in Indianapolis for you know about a year. So um, happy that we're coming home. But uh, you know, it's just a great opportunity for us to be able to show what we're capable of. Um, we thought we had Ohio State. Um, at home and we let that slip away so we get another chance to them on Sunday and then we play Michigan one of the top teams in the entire country 
um, and we're kind of fighting for them for a spot that we believe that we're, we still deserve a one seed. And I think if we're able to show, you know, the national um, media and NCAA tournament community what we're capable of on the road this, this week, that um, I think it's, you know, from my perspective, it's going to be a lock for us to be a one seed if we win both these games. So um, that's the kind of opportunity that we had ahead of us. But um, we have to take care of Michigan first and do what we can to try to stop that, that team because they're, they're one of the best teams in the country for a reason, one of the best defensive teams in the country, um, one of the most well-coached teams. Um, got a lot of players that have been through the ropes at that school. We have to realize that, that we're stepping into a dogfight at Michigan and we have to do everything we can to you know, control the tempo of the game. Okay, Jordan, thanks.